an article that I'm sure some of you will not be surprised about. This article I stumbled upon recently on social media. Supposedly, London is the home of cocaine. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> this article is from the Evening Standard. It's really funny because it just made me laugh. It's like, you know. So, you know, some of those articles that you see online, it's like, oh, um, I remember the other day I was in a barbershop and um, getting my hair cut, of course, as you can see, nice and trim. I was in a barbershop and uh, one of those kind of, you know, stories came up on Sky News about like, oh, research shows that walking can stave off the effects of cancer, right? Or whatever it may be, yeah? And I think people were making some jokes and I was like, oh, yeah, no wonder that's... um. No wonder why crackheads walk around so much, right? And it was like laughing. I was like, yeah, because you've never, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen an overweight crackhead. That's why walking is so important. You have to walk everywhere. So those kind of reports come out. Yeah? There's kind of walk, there's kind of obvious um, Larry, you know, kind of um, reports. But this one is kind of interesting because if you've been to, if you've been to any sort of like night spot in Shoreditch, in Old Street, in Dawson, you would have known that there has been a real big spike, I think, in general. Not just, I think there was a time when, cocaine was reserved for a particular let's say middle class or working class kind of white people for the most part but i think in the last maybe 10 or 5 years or 5 to 10 years it seems as if everyone that's kind of like working within the kind of middle um let's say say mid level executive kind of from up uh, and upwards right who's able to kind of to afford it who maybe has let's say after paying rent they have maybe 900 quid to 1000 pounds um left over for them to spend during the month are uh, you know, for the most part, when they go recreational drug taking, they're not doing weed, they're not doing pills, they're going straight to cocaine. And um, that's a big, big thing. You you see loads of groups of people going and buying coke together as friends and splitting it together. There was a really cool little video actually recently about this dude who kind of deals only to kind of high flying professionals and kind of deals them coke and they go meet up at his house and da da. So it's a real big thing happening at the moment. Um, again, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's because in general we've been overworked in London. I feel as if all of my friends, even the people working low level jobs, even to mid level jobs, there is no separate. It's still as if yeah, you know what I'm thinking about it. There is no separation between the three tiers, low, mid or high um, level executive jobs. I feel as if every, all of my friends, if my friends working in the bar backs, working on a retail shop floor, my friends working in office spaces, my friends w- that are working as managers of, an, of a customer service team, all of my friends are working in same numbers of hours. I don't think I've met anyone so far who has the benefit of just skiving off and leaving work at 4 p.m. Um, everyone's having to like come in really early, stay really late, sometimes answer emails on the weekends. There is no real, get, there is no real break in, t- in kind of, um, your working schedule you're always kind of on so maybe that reason that that's probably one of the reasons why people are turning to stuff like cocaine because it kind of just takes you away from your everyday life right and there's only so much alcohol you can drink because i think in general we do the alcohol thing quite well i think if you're, if you're in office space you'll know that for the most part every friday you get given drinks and um, sometimes on birthdays people get given cakes sometimes on birthdays people go out and buy, go to a bar and have a good time there there's always something happening right and that involves alcohol. So there's only so much alcohol you can have at a certain time. You're like, you know what? I'm off. I'm over this sort of thing. So the next thing to do, the next common, you know, way to go if you're kind of in that kind of indulgency um, 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 rabbit hole is to go down the cocaine route. And um, is London, or for the most part, as I've read in the book, my book zero 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 by Roberto Saviano, London's probably one of the best places to get it because this is where it kind of gets distributed the most. For the most part, it comes in. It comes in via London, doesn't it? From from the south, and sometimes it comes in through Newcastle and Liverpool. But yeah, big article here from the actually even stand. Let's actually read this article first before I start divulging my own expertise on this actual issue here. Um, blah blah blah. So this article is from Living Standards is the following: London has snort twenty three um, kilograms of cocaine a day, twice as much as any other European city. How much is a how much is a brick of cocaine? How many? kg is a brick of cocaine i don't know how much is that how much is one brick of cocaine one brick of cocaine is what so we we, we people in london sniff what in a in in the in that what um his question how much is a one brick of cocaine hi that question is many possible answers due to the main different locations in the world um the the more you buy the cheaper it gets meaning if you if if one brick is 20k four bricks is 70k just an example so but how many grams is one brick I don't know. Okay, 1,000. How many grams is it? 1,000 or 10 or 108 grams. I don't know. Let's see. So I was watching the Between the KG, the Poet of Philly, and one of the parts of the battle screeched in my head. Go to the... 
Okay, so okay, so fair enough. We sm- we sniff a lot supposedly. So anyway, let's go back to the article. So it says twenty three kg. So Londoners are consuming more cocaine than any other European city has revealed. And I've, honestly, this it has to do with the working schedule. It can't be if we're the only European city that works people to forty hour minimums and uh, and up, right? And people are suffering from work um from work based depression. There's a lot of bullying sometimes in workplaces and some jobs are hard to come by. So there's that kind of stress about getting one. If you finally get one, you're just trying your best not to lose it. Um, the fact that there's no much of a work-life balance, the fact that schools are so expensive, if you have kids, you want to put them through there, the fact that you want to, it's so hard to buy houses. There's a lot of barriers that kind of make the job thing really, really crucial. So maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But for the most part, the only people I see that really kind of enjoying their day-to-day work-life balance or work in general are like market traders and stuff like, right? Because they kind of make their own timetable or barbers and stuff like that when I go there or restaurateurs that own their own restaurants. Like they're, they're, kind of, they're probably living the Vida Loca in that regard. Sometimes, not all the time, because I guess, you know, to make a restaurant work, it requires a lot of work in that regard too. But those are the only places where I see it happening. Anyway, so the following. The capital's cocaine market is worth an estimated one, uh, one billion a year and about 23 kg of pure cocaine is snorted a day, equivalent to uh, 567, 400 doses. Well, how do they know what, how much of a dose of cocaine is? Fucking cheeky buggers. The quantity is twice that of any European capital and more than taken in Barcelona, Amsterdam and Berlin combined, which is true because I've having been to Berlin and Amsterdam, sorry, B- Berlin and Barcelona, I know that they don't do as much cocaine as we do. For instance, like they are more experimental with their drugs. I think in the UK, for the most part, we're quite boring. The only time I've seen people kind of doing different drugs or hear, hearing people doing different drugs are kids that have come up, come come down from Scotland. It's been a huge kind of um, surge of kids coming down from Scotland and kind of, you know, trying to make life here or trying to get some experience and take it back up to Scotland, wherever they go, and maybe go back to their art universities. But they have a bit more of a... It feels as if everyone outside of London has a higher tolerance for other drugs except for cocaine because, you know, if you live in a small town in Scotland and you don't have much going on, you can't exactly, you know a couple of pills and some mdma or some coke isn't going to really get you fucked over because you know you 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 you're more you're more um what's that thing called you're more conditioned right there's more time for you to enjoy those things maybe in people's houses and stuff there's not i don't know everyone i've met so far has been has been has a higher tolerance level outside of london i don't know what it is maybe against small town thing maybe it's the fact that you know you do it quite early in 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 age because you're bored and have nothing to do so you start doing drugs when you're 14 13 i don't know but it continues um again like i said they're more experimental in places like berlin do other stuff apart from cocaine we're here it's just like you know most people are only doing cocaine and kept for the most reasons right but after but the rate consumed per person is less than that of bristol which came up top Ah, Bristol's top. Okay, interesting. Forensic uh, scientists um, analyze sewage water for levels of cocaine derivatives metabolized by the body. This is a very interesting study, right? Their results revealed by Sky News show that cocaine usage increased by 30% at the weekend, which is, you know, again, a common thing you'd see. But I have seen a real big surge in people taking cocaine at work. I know a few people, or I've heard of a few stories of people, especially in professional environments, especially in very high profile, high pressure environments, who are taking cocaine to kind of, kind of get them through the days. Because, you know, sometimes... Have you ever walked past Liverpool Street Station or Liverpool Street or around that kind of area where the kind of financial buildings are and you've kind of seen lights on, right? And people seen working in the offices and stuff until like 9, 8 p.m. And then they're coming back um, to work in the morning really early at 8 again in the morning. So to kind of keep that kind of cycle going, there's only so much coffee that's going to really help you out. So you might have to take a couple of bumps here and there to keep you going. But I've seen that. That's a really been a big trend happening so far. And again, it's quite depressing because in number one, the the city is hot, is expensive to live in and hard to live in so you have to kind of you know battle all these kind of you know things to kind of stay afloat and kind of keep your head above water number two to get hold of coke you have to kind of get you know you have to get friendly with some very unscrupulous people right to expose yourself to a world that you probably don't want to be exposed to cool then number three in order to kind of keep that job you're having to sniff this stuff right that's illegal that you shouldn't be doing in your workplace that isn't proper and if you know, if your job found out they'll probably fire you on the spot but that's a common cycle. So it's kind of feeding into each other. And then on the end of it, there is no place to go to and escape and have a good time and just sit in a bar until 4 a.m. because every place closes at 12. So you're heading home, um, still juiced up, still pumped and ready to go at 12 p.m. Nowhere to go. You go pick up some expensive Coke that probably isn't Coke anyway and mix with other sort of shit. And then, you know, it just ends up into a whole disaster. So it's a, it's, it's a cyclical thing. Everyone's sort of involved, right? Everyone's kind of contributing. It's this whole kind of demise and in kind of work-life balance and working standards and shit imagine being a boss and finding out your employees are doing bumps in the toilet like you're paying them to get high like it's just impossible position to be in um anyway 
There, so the French society in, uh, analyzed sewage water. The results um, showed that it was a thirty percent increase on the weekends. Researcher Leon Barron said this is in contrast to other cities where they see a very marked recreational use at the weekend. And so cocaine is an everyday drug in London. Wow, London's daily cocaine market is worth an estimated two point seven million. Um, a gram costs about forty pound. That's probably not true. Experts say the priority has increased more. I think. Uh, Coke for the most part, or drugs for the most part, are more expensive in London than they are anywhere else because there's such a big demand for them and it's such there's such scarcity of actual good products for the most part. I know for that, judging by what people tell me anyway, um, it's hard to get really good stuff. So when you do get good stuff and the person knows they've got good stuff, they'll charge a premium, premium for it because they know they're going to be able to get it because they know that you know as a user, you can get that good stuff from that person. I kind of equated to my haircut. There was a time when I was going to Stanmore to get my fade, right, from that place called Effa Fade. It was a really cool place. All the footballers went there for a period of time. But then, you know, I had to stop going because it's a fucking Elin Broadway. So it's just, it got, it got a bit too much. Um, but I was willing to go to Elin Broadway and pay £25, pound, however much it was, to get a haircut because I knew I was going to get the best haircut that I would ever get in my, you know, in my life at this place. Um, so if you kind of extrapolate that and apply that to stuff like drugs, which are, you know, more addicted than getting a haircut, you know, I can do without getting one for a couple of weeks, then I'm not surprised that people will go to those kind of lengths. But I don't think £40 is right from my experience. Um, blah, blah, blah. Lawrence Gibbons, the head of um, uh, drugs threats of the National Crime Agency, said, I think people don't want to go back to 10 years when purity on the street level was down to 3 or 5%. Wow. That's mad. Last month, the Office of National Security revealed that there were three, six, 637 deaths from cocaine over the last year. Up to, up by... Imagine dying from cocaine over this. How much cocaine are you doing? That's what I always wonder. You have to... Cocaine's a weird drug to get addicted to or to have an addiction of because it, it costs so much, right? Other things like heroin... It's interesting because stuff like heroin, the really bad stuff, right, is really cheap to get, right? You can get heroin for pretty cheap. Alcohol is obviously readily available in most places um, for cheap as well. But to be addicted to cocaine, you have to, you just have to have a, you have to earn a lot of money in it or not, just not pay anything else. Just completely live a life of a monk, right? And not buy any other worldly possessions and just funnel, funnel all your, all your money to eight balls. But it's a very expensive addiction to have. I don't know how people actually do it, to be honest. Um, no idea. Um, it continues. Last month, the Office of National Security revealed that the, the Met Commissioner, Dwayne Creston Dick, has blamed middle class cocaine users for fueling the drug trade and the capital's knife and gun crime. That's just insane, right? An insane assertion to make. Mayor Steve kind of said that drugs are a key driver for the level of violence on the streets. Not really. The level of violence on the streets only really occurs when drugs are low, right? When there's a drought. When they do all those busts and they stop dealers from getting their supply, um, deaths kind of, you know, bodies start to fall straight away because people have to kind of readjust their balance, drag some a product from their rival gang, reassert their dominance, whatever it may be. But those usually happen on the back of droughts and on the back of um, authorities kind of seizing um, drugs that come in from the poor or seizing big smuggling rings, whatever it may be. It's not because middle class drug users are using it. it makes no sense if anything if there was more relaxed drug laws around those kind of things especially maybe around middle class um, um users m maybe the stuff on the street wouldn't be as bad but the stuff on the street has nothing to do with that most has to do with the government not funding or not putting money back into local councils to have like summer schools like i had youth centers are closing left right and center kids don't have areas to really congregate and hang out anymore they don't have it i would see in Stratford all the time kids hanging out in weird sketchy dark spots where they can't be seen because they don't have areas to go and hang out and just be themselves it doesn't really exist which is why you probably see so many kids in Westfield Stratford you know from Wednesday to Saturday or walking around aimlessly not doing anything because they've got nowhere else to go where else can they go right it's just a, such a shit thing and you're blaming middle class cocaine users in Labrador Grove it makes no sense um, anyway, Khan said, recreational drug use is not a victimless crime and anyone purchasing legal drugs should be under no illusions that the horrific expectations of the city supply chain. <laughs> oh, shut up. Tony Sagers, an NCAA former drug um, threat, told Sky News, I would say London has got to a point of market saturation. The demand has gone up. The price has stayed stable. People are able to lay their heads uh, hands on it freely but other cities are catching up the saturation explains why gangs have turned to country lines networks to export the drugs to professional towns okay that's, that's very true that's what um supposedly um what's his name asco got caught um within it right um transporting drugs through country lines so like basically going going to country taking your drugs and exporting it into different towns that don't really have the same amount of supply uh, for it but have a high demand um and obviously people you know that don't have much to do have a lot of free time have money to burn 
you know, when you're bored and have money to burn and you're an adult, the first thing you're going to do is turn to those kind of illicit activities. But yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised about London being the number one place. I think anyone that's been to Shoreditch and Old Tree and seen a whole bevy of lads in tight jumpers, you know, um, <laughs> um, standing around buying cocaine will know that, that that thing is true 